Welcome to Retro Scale Modeling. From the next build, I'm building this Airfix Churchill bridge layer, scale 176. Now this is uh, based on the old Churchill tank, but uh, it's got the bridge layer components, so what's in the box? Well, first of all, we've had instructions. I haven't opened this up yet, so it'll be interesting. So, the instructions. Obviously, this is an older kit. Put me a fix, so you haven't got your colour coordination on your instructions. Well, yep, yeah, just a uh, piece of clay out here. Yeah. Variant sheet, decal marking. So, obviously, just the one variant here, yeah. um, and only one or two decals to put on. And this is, oh, this is obviously part of another kit, or it was the uh, same kit. This is, says Churchill Crocodile Tap. Let me have a look at this. Yeah, it's, you can probably put this in here by mistake, but it's basically the same kit without the, um, I would assume, without the bridge plane device. Yeah, so we don't need that. In the kit itself, we have one, two, three, four screws. So they're they're nicely molded. Actually, it might be a newer kit than I thought. You know, you've got the hull there, the bridge line equipment. And the wheels. Yeah, that's quite good. Small decal sheet. You generally don't use them when they're that small, but I'll we'll see how And of course, the track. So I'll, I'll go and get this primed and uh, we'll jump into the build. So I've got to make up the wheels first of all. There's um, 22 and 11 on each side um, also they're, they're double wheeled so um, it's uh, just a simple case of taking off the special spring and uh, placing the two wheels on each half. The drive wheel and idle wheel are next and um, it's uh, the basic construction of marrying the two halves together here. When placing them on, on the um, sidewall they only go in a, a certain way. It's important to remember, especially when you're doing the opposite side, make sure they're all facing the, the uh, correct dire direction. Put in the smaller wheels first before you put in the um, idle wheels, um, like we saw. For the track, I'm painting it in Humbro 53 gun metal, then I'm going over 56 aluminium, and that's just over the ridges to highlight the track. I'm using Humbro 86 Light Olive to paint the sidewalls here. In fact, that's going to be the main colour all the way through the build. Now the traps are dry, I have to cut them in half, uh, just right down the, the centre line here. Now, in order to close up these uh, traps, you have to use a bit of heat. Uh, so, I'm using my paint to heat it up, and then just dabbing it onto where the join is, and that will melt the plastic enough uh, for it to make the bond. And then once the track is cooled down, it's a simple case of stretching it over the wheels and fitting it into position. You shouldn't have any problem with this, it is quite uh, elasticated. To close up the uh, track and sidewall, uh, the next part just uh, lays on top. Be careful of the location points here, they are clearly marked, but you want to make sure you get them in alignment. I'm now using Tamiya's Wither Master C and the gun metal component just to highlight the rivets and raised areas around the truck area. Now this kit had two doors missing, two arch doors missing. Um, in fact, it wasn't even the number on the sprue that the instructions were calling for, so I would imagine that was a bit of a mistake by Airfix. But it's okay, it's just a simple case of using a bit of plastic card, laying it on top, mark it out, and then cutting it up to fit inside. So once I cut out the little squares, it was a um, simple case of pop, popping them into the recess um, area uh, for them to fit. I uh, then used a couple of slithers of uh, thin plastic to simulate the joints, uh, well hinges. I 
place them on cemented them and then cut off the excess. I'm using Humbro 113 rust. Uh, this part is uh, part of the lifting mechanism I think for the actual uh, bridge. So once the glue was dried on the um, scratch belt hatches it was time to paint the uh, main part of the hull. And as I said, the 86 light olive will be the colour um, which is used for the, the entire model. There is only one gun for the tank and it's a Humbro 53 gun metal. And after each part is painted, yet again I'm going over with the weathering powder to mark up the raised areas. Next to go on is the uh, bracket for the um, bridge itself. This actually holds the uh, piston ram. Now the gun goes in. There is a, a little panel that uh, just sits in front uh, behind the gun. So you can either put it on first or place the gun on then place the panel on. So once that's done it's time to, to make up the main hull. Again there's no real um, issues here. It's just uh, one half placed on top of the other. It is a, a, an odd shape I suppose but the um, Location points for it and self explanatory, you can't get mixed up with it. So it's back to the weathering powder, and I'm using Tavia's Weathering Master B, and I'm using the suit component just to um, tarnish up the wheels and make them look used. Next to go on is uh, a couple of spare track uh, links, which are painted in the, the colour that I used for the track. There's also a couple of boxes that go on the side as well. They were a straightforward fit. Um, the, I, I would suggest fitting the boxes first. Uh, you can, the two rectangular holes that you can see on the side of the hull, that's where they fit into. And then the, the trap just uh, fits it in front of that or behind it, depends on how you look at it. Next is to put the um, side walls onto the main hull, and they just uh, fit on. There, there's um, a, a recess um, line inside the, the hull which uh, corresponds to the um, borders of, of the actual track tank. It, they, they do fit in nicely but it can be a little bit of struggle to get them in initially because it's difficult to see exactly where they go once the um, unit is uh, placed side by side. So pick a point, a starting point, and then just carefully guide it in and it should be okay. Now we're moving on to the bridge and, and there's um, Two, two parts uh, to the main uh, construction of the bridge and um, e each part is the same obviously the one side to the other so um, you just uh, fit this um, flat panel into the main construct here and it fits into the um, location points quite well once they're made up there's a couple of brackets that you have to put on now you've got to try and make sure you get these in as squarely as possible they do um, sit on a little run of plastic, it runs down uh, at the sidewall here, uh, but it's important that they are straight. Also, it's a good um, time to paint these at this stage as well, because it could be a little bit tricky once they're built to try and paint them, especially the insides, which you will see. And so, um, to fit them together, um, obviously the um, opposite end of the bracket fits in the same way, uh, other, you initially fitted the brackets to the the first um, side, side of the uh, bridge. Um, the instructions uh, show you a little trick to do. Just um, get a, a straight surface and then push them down hard to it. That way you'll get them straight. If you see here, I'm using uh, the um, casing for the weathering powder and I'm um, just pushing it like that. that, that enables them to be straight. On to the piston housing now. Uh, I didn't do this at the time because I wasn't sure what I was doing, but um, now would be the time to have a look at it if you want the thing to move um, in its full range, and the track in its full range. If you do, the little end stop at the end of this uh, unit, open it up um, a little bit more than it actually is also inside the actual unit as well that way you can get the the ram rod of the piston to come in and out at, at the actual housing so once you've fed the crossbar there's a couple of uh, brackets after the one 
try and get them straight. These are the ones that are going to actually uh, fit into the top of the tank. The parts are a bit fragile, so just be careful with this process. You, you may snap them if you're too heavy handed. Now on here, I'm, I'm putting on a little bit of sprue, a little bit of cut off here, just to fit into the um, recess hole there. I wasn't sure whether this uh, plate was uh, meant to turn or not. So I, I put in this little extra bit just to make sure, sure um, it would be able to turn if need be. Turns out it wasn't uh, meant to turn, so I didn't have to do that process. But I, I wasn't sure at the time. So I was only adding a little bit of sprue to the part, so there was no harm done. So when, when I'm fitting the actual main bracket, take a look at where the, uh, it's going to sit on the tank to the um, level of the piston uh, ram housing you, you want to get this as straight as possible next is a couple of brackets for the opposite end and um, they're a simple construction but the instructions are not really that clear you have to really look at them as uh, how these make up first of all make up um, the triangle part of the bracket first uh, with the uh, with the flat extending piece which has the um, housing bracket for the wheels um, or on it, so make sure that those two parts are together first, and also make sure that they're facing the right way, so the um, the little pins that hold it in place face inwards towards each other. And you can put on the supporting bracket. Now this goes on at an angle, so it's better if you um, place the top part on first, then angle it down onto the tank. That way you you'll achieve the, the proper angle. So when it's on, then you can just manoeuvre it into position, um, how, how it should be. It, it's the easiest way if I'm doing it. Next, I'm making up the cradle that holds the, the bridge. Um, the two side brackets, make sure they're going in the same direction as each other. The, these will actually hold the, the wheels as well as the cradle. These can be cemented in position, but the... Um, the, the the rod that uh, goes in the middle, that does not get spent, uh, cemented. Make sure that is free moving, it's quite important. So obviously there's no cement uh, needed for it, it just places in. Um, just cement uh, around the area. It, you shouldn't have too much difficulty. The area is quite big enough to have a bit of cement around it without causing it to bump up and, and glue into place. And once both parts were in place, it's uh, worth checking just to make sure that the um, rod does actually move. Okay, well, so I'm on the part now. You, you've got options for the actual trapdoor mechanism for it to be hard against the tank, starting its process with an upright position or, of course, like laid flat. So it's A, B, and C. Um, I'm in two minds uh, what to do really because I was thinking while I was doing this I might make it into a diorama but not quite yet. I'm going to build a, a couple of other bits and pieces for us or I may not. So I'll see if there's a way I can build it so it is uh, movable. Also this part here can move. I've put this in loosely so it can move. But I've got a feeling this is meant to be um, secured, which is not a problem. I'm just putting a little bit of cement underneath it on, holding some problem. So I'll have a look at this. So I think I can get it to move um, up and down. I've taken the piston arm off in the cradle. It was only lightly cemented. I will uh, cement this in position so. This little part here is not needed that I just put on because I thought it would move. But it doesn't, by the looks of it. So I'll cement that into position. And what I've done here is I've taken my pin drive and opened up the disc here to receive the rod of the piston. Um, also, ideally, it would have been better if I'd done this before. I made the inner hop. But um, I'd made the inner hop and I can't get it apart without breaking all the plastic, so also I'm not going to do that. 
for the drive uh, piston rod, th there's three different uh, lengths uh, on here, uh, depending on what uh, style you're doing. The C one is the longest one, so I'm putting the longest one in, and that will just fit in there like that. And then obviously you can move up and down. It is catching a little bit on that number plastic. So I'll, I'll have a, a go at trying to get it down a bit. There's a little bracket that goes on the end of the rod there. And fit that first before you paint it. It makes it easier just to handle it. For the rod itself, I'm going to be painting it for just so it's aluminium by Ombro. Fitting the cradle is quite simple. Where you put the uh, two brackets to fit the both pieces of the bridge together, there's a little carriage there that just holds it uh, clear out in position. Now, um, because I want it to move, I'm just placing in two little tiny bits of plastic card uh, to act as a, a stopper for, for these uh, parts uh, not to fall out. Now, of course, the instruction says cement them in place, um, so that doesn't happen. But because I want them free moving, I've had to add this little part. And then I'm just adding the push bar to the actual um, rod of the piston uh, before inserting it in to the piston housing. And just um, when I'm doing this, I'm just teasing it in with uh, my tweezers. The uh, cement's not 100% uh, set yet. Uh, this was because I wasn't sure whether um, this uh, would be able to be a solid unit or not. Transpires it can be a solid unit because all the movement is taken on the cradle. So, um, anyway, it's re really good that you can have this option, even though the instructions don't tell you to, to have this option. Um, but um, it was quite a joy to discover that I was able to do that. So, ignore that bend as the cradle comes up because um, it will be set in place as a, as a one straight unit. So that brings the build to an end. As I said, I'm not sure if I'm going to do a diorama or not, but I've, I've built it in such a way that it's not possible to put it in a diorama with different configurations. Uh, I'll make my mind up uh, down the line. This is a very good little kit to build. It doesn't take long at all. It took me a day to build it. Um, the painting is simple, so anyone can have a go at this kit. I would um, highly recommend it. Even if you decide to make it all movable like I did, it's a very simple process to do. So if you haven't done so already, why don't you check out my channel for my other builds. Of course, uh, subscribe to that channel for future builds. Hit that like button, and of course you can leave a comment. But for now, thank you all very much for watching. Bye bye.